guys, welcome back to my channel. And Garb August week two and three. <laughs> Sorry for not making a video last week. Uh, what happened is that I had high hopes for Garb August week two because, which was vintage trash by the way, as in pre-1980. And I, my week one went really well. I read two really cool books. I watched a few Netflix thingies that paired very well. It was great. It was great. I had these two books ready for Garb August week two which were The Haunted Monastery by Robert Van Gulk and Iceberg by Clive Cussler. As you can see, I started reading this. I tried to slide into week two uh, beautifully, but I kind of landed like a walrus on an unlubricated tarmac because this is all I read. <laughs> Oopsie! Here is what this book is about. Frozen inside a million ton mass of ice is a bizarre ocean vessel with a crew of corpse, corpses and a key to the ultimate conspiracy. A super supercharged scheme that could blow every fuse on earth. Not even the devil's triangle has a secret as lethal as Iceberg by Clive Cussler, <laughs> author of Raise the Titanic exclamation point. <laughs> so, okay, so I only read the epilogue and, uh, no, sorry, the prologue and chapter one, and even though I really only read, um, 24 pages in a whole week, because life gets in the way sometimes, let's all, you know, we all know that. Um, and however, um, despite my epic failure, I think I struck garb gold, because I experienced something that is in fact not on the bingo card, which is um, Garbception. Uh, because in the prologue, epilogue, what? No, whatever. The chapter that comes before chapter one. Chapter zero. In chapter zero, there was in fact a man reading a trashy book. I was reading about a man who was reading about a girl who was getting slimed on by aliens or whatever in her parts. Well, not really. It's like a slimy alien that like she's like in a position and the slimy thing goes from her leg to her like up her leg and to her cooter kind of thing. But anyway, that's irrelevant. That has nothing to do with this book, I think. Uh, anyway, so I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is good or bad or whatever. And then this one is kind of Judge D, inscrutable 8th century Chinese detective, the Sherlock Holmes of the Tang Dynasty, occupies the sleepless, fevered night, what? Yes, occupies the sleepless, fevered night, uncovering vice, conspiracy, murder, and other suspicious goings on in the Taoist monastery of the morning clouds high up in a decade, in a desolate mountain region. This is really well done, sophisticated crime fiction. That's not me, that's what it says here. <laughs> you know, I like a short and sweet resume on the back. Can we bring those back instead of just reviews by reviewers? <laughs> anyway, so that's week two. Week three, should be more promising. However, it is Friday morning and I have not started anything yet. I had a few books planned for this week. Um, week three is Anything Goes. Week three is Anything Goes and I haven't had a chance to read anything yet because again, life. However, today's the day. Uh, I am wearing my Axl Rose t-shirt so anything is possible. Uh, with Guns N' Roses in your life. So for week three, I had one book planned for sure, and then two books that I was like hoping to get to. So the book I wanna get to for sure, which is the book I'm gonna start today, is Ways to Ruin a Royal Reputation <laughs> by Danny Collins, um, which I'll get to in a sec. And then the other two were Sharkantula by Essel Pratt, 
Um, and Space Sharks by Alan Spencer. I think Mutant Shark books or movies are like the pinnacle of trash. Uh, in a good way. So here's the synopsis to Ways to Ruin a Royal Reputation. <clears throat> the King of Valia never wanted to ascend to the throne, but in order to abdicate, Luca needs a good old-fashioned disgrace. <laughs> That's where powerhouse PR pro Amy Miller comes in. <laughs> Amy's reviewed the career of many a star. She can certainly torpedo that of a reluctant royal. <laughs> But when instant attraction ignites with Luca, Amy's soon starring in the scandal. And the fire burning between them is anything but fake news. But will this explosive flame be extinguished by what's hidden in Amy's past? <laughs> I was talking with my cousin one day and she's like, hey, I found this book in a donation box at work and it's been there for a while. And it was this one. And it was like, this has been a, in the box for a while, and from the publication date, I can tell someone put it in there right after. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about the book, but <sighs> let's find out, shall we? <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I finished reading Ways to Ruin a Royal Reputation, and... I went into this knowing I did not like romance. <laughs> um, knowing this was kind of a smutty, like a uh, chill, read a book between two serious books kind of book to your brain, you know? So the gist of this story is basically Luca is the king of Valia and Amy is a PR specialist in London and he hires her to ruin his reputation because he wants his sister, Sophia, to take the, tr the throne because she should have had it if their father hadn't been sexist and given it to him. But for some reasons, which are still very unclear to me, he can't just abdicate. Like, there are reasons thrown around which are all very stupid to me. I'm just like, no, dude, just like, you're king, he's dead, you know, like, what do we want? But anyway. Anyway, because it's a it's a romance, so there's no he can't just do that, you know, and so he hires her to ruin his reputation, and essentially they like go goo goo gaga over each other because they're two totally hot adults, you know, whatever. So essentially, the paparazzi bust them having an affair while he she's working for him, and so this etiquette, like professional etiquette, is getting in the way of their feelings and then it gets really corny and then it gets a little sexist and then it gets a little goo goo gaga for whatever reason and then um they get back to London and then he decides to move to London and he buys a house and then he's like uh you know asks her to marry him and whatever and apologizes and then air gets cleared in some kind of way and then like a week after meeting they get married or whatever and it's very romantical and very whatever I don't know I guess in some kind of twisted way I low-key enjoyed the torturous platitude of all this vanilla sex going on but like I don't know I wouldn't reread this book I this book has confirmed to me that I have been am and will always be allergic to romance so yeah so I selected a few passages for you to understand what kind of book this is that I'm gonna read in a chronological order, okay? I took notes and highlights on my Kindle for this video specifically. Call me Luca, he said by way of introduction. He invited her to sit. Gratefully, Amy had sunk onto the sofa, suffering from the worst case of starstruck. But here she was, acting like a sixth former, biting her fist because a particularly nice backside was in her line of sight. He cocked his brow to let her know he had totally and completely cocked her, drooling over his butt. Infatuation Avenue was firmly closed off. It's rare to hear a powerful man sound so supportive and willing to step aside for anyone, let alone a woman. That's so nice. He bet she could ruin him, he just bet. I won't be tied up and spanked. That's not my thing. Like anyone would believe you're a bottom. I'm sorry. 
She hid her wits behind her hand. He was aroused. The stiffness of his undeniable against the part of her that was growing soft and damp and bright. She suddenly bulked with a press of her palm to her chest. I have not brushed my teeth. Most relatable quote in the whole book, by the way. Well, I hope you enjoyed these out of context quotes. I hope these give you a better idea of what kind of malarkey I've been putting myself through last week. And yes, I'm happily going to move on to week four. I guess it's on me for reading this back to back with French philosophy, but like, I don't know. The only, have, you know, it's supposed to be a smutty book and they only have sex twice and it's exactly the same thing both times, okay? Let me tell you what happens. He starts kissing her neck, he backs her up onto a bed, and they have regular degular sex and then they fall asleep. I mean... <sighs> like and subscribe if you want me to recover from this. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed your weeks, for real. Enjoy your last week. See you guys next time. Bye!